This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Okay, you can set your clock. We're going to be a little late, a couple of minutes, but you can set your clock on Wednesday afternoon at 4 p.m. with Hawaii, the state of clean energy, which is supported by the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum. That is Maria Tomei. She's a co-host, and she's a member Hi. of the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum on the steering committee. We're going to talk about that in a little while. Okay. And our special guest from Hawaiian Electric is Ricky Hanma, and he's uh, the Education and Consumer Affairs what, Director. Oh, one day, one day. Just okay, one day, one day. Day. Okay. Yes, He's involved in education and consumer affairs at Hawaiian Electric. Thanks for coming down to oh, the show. Happy to be here. But you're here for a reason, aren't you? I am. I'm here to promote our Hawaiian Electric Clean Energy Fair. Um, it's October 6th from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. at Kahala Mall. October 6th is what, a Friday? Saturday. Saturday. Yes, oh, good. Okay. So take off Saturday, go to, go to Kahala Mall and spend the day. And it's really the whole day, the whole bulk of the day. Anyway. What am I going to see over there? You know, we have different activities, games, things kids can play, um, all about education on clean energy and emergency preparedness. Uh, we also have uh, entertainment. We're going to have a musical performance from our hula, uh, our Nahoku Hano Hano award-winning duo, mm -hmm. Kupawa. Mm -hmm. We have a keiki hula halau mm -hmm. that'll be there for a presentation. That'll be great. I can it take is. pictures, eh? Sure. Bring my camera. Come on down. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You guys, when you go out like this, you know, to a, a public event like that, you really go serious. I know you do. I went to the uh, Boy Scouts, um, the, the Ellison Onizuka Day function at, um, at the, uh, at the uh, Blaisdell about mm, 60 days ago. Hawaiian Electric was there in, in, in regalia. You guys you had so many things going on. It was great. It was all good, too. Yeah. 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 Is that what you're working on all the time? You know, my department, I am a part of the Education and Consumer Affairs Department, so I do have the opportunity to be out in the public quite a bit. Mm -hmm. We do participate in as many events as possible, um, take advantage of different events that are already pre-run, and we participate with them, set up booths, help educate the public, um, and then we do throw our events, just like our Clean Energy Fair. Mm -hmm. So what, what sort of education do you want at the end of the day? What, What's the takeaway? In other words, if I come, what do you want me to learn while I'm there? You know, the Clean Energy Fair is all about learning about our precious island resources, um, different renewable energy sources, and what you can do to conserve electricity. Okay. So it's all of the foregoing. It's, it's a raising awareness. It's raising sort of a mindfulness, a consciousness about energy. A, a lot of people, they walk in the room, they flip the switch. They don't think about you know, how much you have to do to get the power to come through the switch. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And Hawaii, uh, we've been so reliant on fossil fuels, and we are, by 2025, going to be converted to 100% renewable energy. Okay, I want to be alive then. Well, 2045, yeah. Oh, yeah. 2045. Yeah. It's right around the corner. So what would you add to that, Maria Tomei? Well, um, so Energy Awareness Month um, is what they used to call it. And I noticed now they're calling it Energy Action Month. I guess maybe awareness is not enough anymore. They want people to take action. There would be more than aware. We have yeah, to do yeah, things. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So I guess usually Hawaiian Electric has um, little guides to how to save energy in your home, how to save money, you know. So what are some of the top ways that you're hoping to exhibit or to explain to people about how they can save money in their homes? Uh, we do hand out a lot of different informational booklets on what you can do in your own home. Uh, we also focus on the youth, the future generation, on what they can do, empower them to make energy con conscious choices at home as well. Yeah, yeah. So um, I noticed that some other events you've had um, little contests. I, I guess they have the wheel, and then you answer the questions, and it's like, okay, you know, what kind of light bulbs do you have in your house? And people don't necessarily know. You know, that, that's been around for forever, right? And then the water heating. You know, and what else, you know, and so to save energy, you know, we've gone through a really hot summer, right? So there are things that homeowners can do to keep the heat out of the house. You know, do you turn on the AC? Do you turn on fans? You know, um, people Every can. Every household can, is different. They, so they know. might have questions that, that your experts there can, can answer. Definitely. Education helps yeah. you make the best, you know, educated decision and conscious decisions on what you can do. Yeah. 
again, electricity is now a necessity in homes. Yeah. So just making the most conscious energy conservation, energy conscious decisions as possible. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, the, the whole thing about education has been central in the clean energy initiative, even from back when. I mean, I remember all these programs. I remember one program that was put on about sustainability, but including clean energy uh, in the, the Priory, uh, in the church next to the Priory. And um, it was uh, Honolulu Theater for Youth. Oh, okay? that one. Yeah, it was yeah. Very Shaka. Good. Yeah, it was, a, it was a musical, actually. <laughs> yeah. Hank Rogers supported it. Blue Planet supported it. And what, what struck me is that they were singing songs. And I'm, I'm going to ask you more about the songs. <laughs> In fact, at the end of the show, you know, Ricky, we'd like you to sing, sing some songs. Well, <laughs> um, oh, I have my favorites. <laughs> <laughs> How's your voice? So they were singing songs there in, in, the, in the church. And uh, during the Theater for Youth, and these kids, they were like mm, six seven, eight years old maybe. Uh, they came on buses from all over the island yeah, uh, to watch this play. Uh, and it was really good, you know, it was adapted to kids. So kids would be really interested in, and they were. And at the end of the play, and this is the part that struck me, is they remembered the songs. So as they marched out of the auditorium back to their buses, these kids that were six, seven, eight years old were singing the songs they'd heard. Well. It didn't stop at the songs. They had all these messages about reuse, recycle, and all that, right? And they were taking those messages home. So that's part of your education, um, you know, initiative to try to get, especially kids. Uh, you must be focused on kids, at least to some extent, Definitely. to go home and teach their parents, right? Exactly. Um, working with Hawaii Theater for Youth, um, they actually did perform Shaka. Hawaii Electric was a proud sponsor of that. Mm -hmm. um, and we do promote uh, energy conservation through Maka, the Energy, con en en energy Conservation Owl. Um, he was another project to work with Hawaii Theater uh, for youth through as well. So you try to, if you, if you hit the kids, you know they're, they're going to remember. They're going to pick it up right away. It's going to be, you know, embedded already in them as people as they grow up. And they're going to take it home and all of a sudden the family the whole family will be more aware, more conscious. Of exactly. This. And yeah. especially when you empower them at a young age, they make those decisions in the future. Yeah. So that's what we're focusing on, is making sure the youth of the today can make those decisions as they grow older. Yeah. yeah. And I would also guess, Ricky, and you must be part of this too, Maria, is that the level of awareness in this state is way higher than in other states. The level of awareness, we, we've worked on it for at least yes. 10, 15 years now. <laughs> at least. And, you know, at least, right? <laughs> they yeah. must be thinking about this. They must yeah. be some, at least somewhat sophisticated. Can you tell me how sophisticated they are, these kids, these families right now today? It's, it's come a long way. And I know with our educational programs, uh, we are involved in a lot more of the DOE schools than we were previously. We have a lot more uh, booklets, collateral things that they can request. We have a lot of different resources for them. Um, and kids nowadays, they are uh, involved in robotics. Uh, STEM programs are helping them come along at a rapid pace. Uh, we have children in as low as fourth, fifth grade creating robots and competing with intermediate high school students. Uh, so it is something that is evolving really rapidly. Yeah. So as you go, you know, it builds on itself, doesn't it? I mean, if you if you take somebody who or I, I always found this to be true. If you take somebody who already has a baseline of knowledge, who knows at least some, already knows at least mm -hmm. some of what you're saying, and then you give him more, uh, or her, um, then you get then you reinforce the existing knowledge, and a level of confidence. And then you get a, a person who is more interested and committed, mm -hmm. you know, to something like clean energy yeah. than you would have had. Yeah. So you also mentioned another aspect of what you're hoping to accomplish at your Clean Energy Day on October 6th. Um, so energy emergency preparedness, those types of, of things. I know with the recent hurricanes, we've had a lot of discussion of disasters, disaster preparedness, designing systems to withstand hurricanes. Um, and so you're going to talk to folks about what they need to know to stay safe? Are you going to talk about if the pole falls over, don't touch it, <laughs> stay, exactly. stay 30 feet away? And, you know, because yeah. electricity is such 
a, a necessity now. Mm -hmm. um, emergency preparedness is just as important. Um, making sure your family is prepared for extended outages that can come with natural disasters. Um, everything from cooking, food preparation, and even medical needs require electricity. So making the emergency preparations you can before emergency strikes is what our message is always. Be prepared. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're going to take a short break now, Ricky, but before we do, I just wonder if you could just, you know, you're going to have a halal there, and you're going to have a, a singing group. Um, I wrote it down, but I, don't, I can't read my handwriting. What was the name of the singing group? The Nahoku Hoku Hano, Hano Award winning group, Kupa Oa. Kupa Oa, yeah. yeah. And group our halal pre yeah. uh, performing that day is halal Puale O Liko Yeah, so are, are you going to get up on the stage with them and... And if you are, could you just give us? We're we're going to go to a we're going to go to a break now. So we like to have a little music <laughs> as we go into the break. You know, if I memorized those shaka songs, I would have performed them for you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let the record reflect. We're going into the break. You've got until October sixth to learn music. some of those. Yeah. Watch this. No music. This is Think Tech Hawaii raising public awareness. When I was growing up, I was among the one in six American kids who struggle with hunger. But with the power of breakfast, the kids in your neighborhood can think big and be more. Go to hungeris.org to make breakfast happen for kids in your neighborhood. The truth is I'm impressed. I haven't been asked such intelligent questions in a long time. Thanks. Aloha, I want to invite all of you to Talk Story with John Wahei every other Monday here at Think Tech Hawaii. And we have special guests like Professor Colin Moore from the University of Hawaii who joins us from time to time to talk about the political happenings in this state. Please join us every other Monday. Aloha. Yep. If you move, you can change that. Okay, we're back. We're live, and here we are. Hawaii, the state of clean energy with Maria Tome, um, who is a member of the steering committee of the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum, and she's co-host of the show, and she sets these shows up, and she's just great. <laughs> I'm pinch hitting thank, temporarily. Thank you for okay. everything, Maria. Thank you. Well, yeah, let's, so, talk, let's talk about the Energy Policy Forum. Okay. You know, Sharon Mori Rocky uh, ran for the Senate. She won the primary. The general was coming in November, and she was the, uh, what, co-chair with Mike Hamnett for, yep. oh, 15 years. And now uh, we went out and had a search committee, and we found Sherilyn Wee, yep. who's a, a PhD economist from yep. the Public Policy Center in the School for what is it, Social Sciences at UH. Yep. And she is now taking over, and yeah. things are going to be um, different. Yeah. And we're looking yeah. forward, and Maria and I are both part of this process of the reimagining of the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum. This is yep. very exciting Great. stuff. Yeah. Want to talk about it? Yeah, so the re you know when I first got involved in Hawaii Energy Policy Forum, um, I really appreciated that it was a place that welcomed a bunch of different views and was an opportunity for the folks who had been involved in energy to communicate with the folks who were newly arrived in you know completely informal setting. And, you know they get together and they they chat and they discuss the problems and you know, the potential, and you have enthusiasm, and you have um, opposition, and but it's respectful. It's civil dialogue. You know, this is what you have on your show. You know, it's this, I don't know what your catchphrase is regarding the civil dialogue part, mm -hmm, but, yeah. but that's really what it is, you know, an opportunity. And then they made the effort to go out with the, um, the shows and the communications and Clean Energy Day, and that in the beginning they had a lot of reports. Now, um, in fact, I think in 2003 or thereabouts, one of the reports was about the Public Utilities Commission and, you know, how it compares to the other ones. And pretty much everybody on the forum agreed that the PUC needed more resources in order to regulate this increasingly complex utility space. And so that was, you know, something that is bearing fruit now with our, you know, new reorganized and re-empowered and um, reinvigorated Public Utilities Commission. Yeah. So, um, you know, the, so the forum brings folks together to discuss, debate, and identify areas of common interest to move, to move things forward, even if they are not necessarily in agreement on something, if they can live with it 
then they can continue to discuss it. So yeah. that I think that I think that is one of the most important parts of this organization. And I think Sherilyn, who's the, the new head um, or whatever the, whatever the proper title is, mm. you know, I think it resonates with her that that aspect of it. You know, yeah. because we have very very interesting energy opportunities and challenges and getting all the pieces to work together um, in, in, in our energy yeah. futures. We're on a journey. Yeah. <clears throat> yes. And we're, we've yeah. only really started. I mean, if you count the years, say we, we've been operating for about, well, I'm, I'm making this up, but maybe 15 years now. It sounds about right. Yeah. yeah. And, and then we have another mm, 30 yes. to go yeah. before we reach 2045 or 2048, okay. whatever. Okay. 2045. 2045. 2045, 2045 yeah. Uh, there's a long a way to go. Yeah. There's a lot to do. And, and certainly we've seen a lot of changes in the past 15 years. Yeah. We've seen a, a state that really didn't think much about this to a state that thinks a lot about it, yeah. to a state that didn't have much renewables, to a state that has really a, a very admirable uh, amount of renewables, that, that has had great experiences, uh, that has sort of carved the future out of, out of the past and the present yeah. and, made, and made a vision for itself, the state has made a vision for itself. Um, is, is central, isn't it, in, in public policy in general? Right, right. We've had here, right. And the, and the energy policy forum has been there. It has tried to educate people, just like Ricky does. Yeah. It has tried to bring them together as a sort of a gathering place, reach consensus, um, yeah. and in a nice way, so that we don't get into too and many arguments. And even if you can't reach consensus, at least you've discussed and understood what are the. Right different viewpoints, you know, what are the holdups? What are the concerns? You yeah. know, is it a near-term concern or a longer-term concern? Yeah. And then through creative disagreement, you can actually find ways through that, you yeah. know? And so, so I, I, I think um, we'll, we'll be doing a lot more, you know, I look yeah. forward to. But we've already, you know, found certain things that work. We found the consensus model. Um, we found, um, you know, the, yeah. the benefit of bringing people yeah. together and addressing policy issues. Yeah. We found the benefit of a, a, legislative, a legislative briefing every January mm -hmm. where we try to bring the legislation, legislators up to, um, you know, uh, latest events um, uh, in the thought that that will help them fashion legislation that will be appropriate to meet the reality and, yeah. and the aspirations. Um, we've talked to a lot of people in public office. Um, and we've, yeah. we've had a lot of people in the industry come together to give advice yeah. to people in public office. Yeah. We've been available, you know, to have this discussion with anyone who is involved. Uh, and there are roughly, what, 45 members of the forum right now from government, Something like that, yeah. from industry, yeah. from what else, uh, government, industry, the public, uh, activists, community organizations, you name it. Yeah, I th and I think... Um, the consensus model is one of the one of the things that is um, both enables folks to participate because um, they're not afraid that their name will be on something that they cannot stomach, but on the other hand, you know, there's a lot of debate and disagreement on the details. So sometimes it seems that that is holding things up. And what I heard in the most recent discussions is maybe um, looking at a new model that allows. Um, that information to be shared more. Say, you know, we disagree because of X. You know, before if it was disagreement and just well, it might just not not result in the forum taking a position. Yeah. And so the idea is you have all these folks who are bringing their knowledge and their experience and their interest to bear, and they can share that. If if we can find a way for them to share that, then it's much more valuable. So we'll see how that works. Now, like everything else, the vision is the first step, and then how you get it to work and how you put the pieces together and how you craft craft the language or the vehicle, whether it's presentations or uh, meetings or reports. Um, maybe, you know, this is a UH project, so there's probably yeah, some research and surveys. I forgot to mention, the is involved up to its eyeballs right, in, what, right. in what we research do. Right, Research and surveys, um, too. There's HNEI so. over there. There's many departments involved in energy yeah. and, and changing our society to uh, adopt, adapt our energy yeah. program to clean energy. Um, but I, I wanted to mention this, too, though, and, and it's, uh, it's, what, it's what you were saying, is that we, um, we need to get 
people to buy in. Um, the consensus model is not just consensus among the, the 45 stakeholders uh, who are members, so to speak, yeah. of the Energy Policy Forum. It's a matter of, of getting everybody to understand what's happening and having them buy in. And I'm reminded, if I can take a minute to tell you, <clears throat> of what Neil Milner said in one of our programs in, in the Venture Capital Association years ago about rail. Because the problem with rail is the government did rail before the people knew they wanted rail. Uh, and, and so you get a disconnect when that happens. You've got to get the people on board. That's not, that's not a pun. To get people <laughs> on board before, before you actually go out and, and do it and spend the money. In fact, they should be on board, as you were saying, not, yeah. not only in the visioning, um, but also in the implementation of the plan. Well, there's a whole spectrum, right? You've yes. got some folks who are looking at the future problems and saying, you know, it's going to take us 50 years to prepare for that situation. We have to start now. And those folks are, you know, looking at the vision thing and saying, yes, it's going to take that long. And then you've got the folks who react. They are very busy with other elements of their lives. And they say, well, if I don't need to do anything today, I'm not going to worry about it. And so you have this whole spectrum of, you know, the people. And so I think what the Energy Policy Forum does, and especially if we do involve more of the discussion and make that a little more um, accessible, is to understand what are the near-term impacts, what are the near-term actions, what are the benefits and costs, and what are the long-term impacts. Because very often, you don't see both of those yeah. in presentations. You, you, see, you see, OK, this is going to cost you this, or this will benefit you this in the next six months. And then there's a whole other discussion that's talking about 50 years from now. But to be able to discuss the long-term as well as the near-term and the steps to get there, I think, is, is an inter a very interesting discussion that brings in the whole spectrum of, of folks and their interests. And never, ever forget repetitio mater studiorum, okay. which is Latin, okay. which means that, that uh, uh, repetition is the mother of study. So if you're going to try to educate the legislature, you really have to go down there and educate them <laughs> once every two years at the least, or more frequently if you can. Because they forget. New generations of legislators come in who don't who didn't who weren't at the last briefing. You know? Yeah. yeah. Um, and the same thing with people in general. More people become aware, they weren't aware before, they need to know, and you have to sort of re expose the public to these things. So it's always a matter of and that's why it's good that uh, you know Ricky and Hawaiian Electric are doing this every year, mm -hmm. uh, where you know they're trying to you know teach people about energy and and give them you know uh, an education in energy, <clears throat> and so the forum has to do that too, um, because you, you cannot assume that what you taught them last year or the year before is going to stick. Not only to that, things change. It. You know, the, right. yes, thank you, you know the interest and the um, emphasis change. You know, when you're in the middle of hurricane season and you've got a bunch of name storms heading your way, all of a sudden you're paying attention to that in a way that you hadn't before. And likewise, you know, in a year that's calm, you know, maybe it's not about emergency preparedness, you know, as much. Sure. And you know, and so when you're talking like the city and county with their resiliency program, you know. They're, they're looking at what do we need to do in the near term as well as what about the long term because this is going to be a challenge of our generation. And so I hope, I hope that our, the person we had previously scheduled for today who couldn't make it can come back in a couple of weeks yeah. and, and we can have that conversation. Well, because it's an, opportun you know, it's an opportunity. I think very often um, folks have a tendency to complain about change. I don't want it to change because I like it the way it is. You know, and if it's going to change, you know, you say, well, that's, I didn't want it to change, and it did, and I failed. The other way to look at that is to say, you know, change is going to happen, and so success will be managing and working with that change in the best way possible, and then you try to prevent further change. And so there are two parts We're of it. We're being part of it. How do, you, how, do you measure, you know, how do you measure success? And so if you see it as a challenge that, you know, we are trying to prevent additional global warming, and we are also trying to ensure that our cities and our state is um, prepared, you know, you, you need to do both. And so if you can look at it as how do, how, how do we measure success? And that's the Energy Policy Forum gets into really interesting discussions on how do you measure success? Well, it's you know, a think what's tank. our metric? It's yeah. a think tank. Yeah. You know, like yeah. the metrics program is worth mentioning. Carl Friedman yeah. does that. And, yeah. um, 
you know, we have metrics on how well we've been doing in, in clean energy yeah. gee, for the past several years, and it'll be more refined going forward. And you'll be able to see it in graphical form yeah. and tabular form on how well we're doing or not. And, and then we can use that to uh, fashion the legislation um, to appreciate our success or lack of it. Yeah. Uh, maybe to get, you know, to get more active in some areas or uh, less active in other areas. You got, you got yeah. what are they, what is, um, you know, they, they say on the uh, Hokulea, um, you've got to know where you are to know where you're going. Yeah. <laughs> So That's true. our navigation of this initiative yeah. has to be with due regard for where we are. Yeah. yeah. If I could say something about, you know, navigation. Um, very often people say, where's the energy plan? You know, I want to see a plan for the next 20 years. Well, you don't know what technology is going to do in the next 20 years or the economy, you know, or the energy space, really. If you, <laughs> the energy planner's crystal ball is pretty opaque. But um, so maybe you don't have the plan. What it is is wayfinding, right? You know the signs, you know, how, how do you read the signs of success? You know, what do you need to do? How do you need to work together to go in the right direction and to take into account the swells and the wind and the storms and, and the resources you have? And um, in, I think it's more like a wayfinding thing rather than it complaining, I don't have a, you don't have a plan, you know? It's like, well, what do we need? What expertise, what knowledge, what awareness? What working, you know, Let's spirit of working to together everything. do you need yeah. for us to navigate this journey yeah. successfully? Yeah. So, so that's what I see the energy very policy Very challenging, for. but very important yeah. to the state. Yeah. And I think, uh, you know, this is, this is central in the energy mm, phenomenon, energy initiative for the state. And, and the energy itself is central to the future of the state, lest we forget. So the energy policy forum is actually very important in terms of public policy, bringing people together, educating the community. And, and a big part of it is this, is ThinkTech, right here. And, and I really appreciate people from the forum who come down here and, you know, and, and try to educate people and let them know what the, what the current affairs yeah. are. And they uh, never know what you're going to ask them. That's okay. It keeps them awake. Yeah. We, <laughs> our job is to keep them awake for me. Yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> yeah. So what's, what's happening? We, we've had a meeting of the steering committee that was very effective last week. Cheryl and we got, you know, the, the thing started, yeah. and I thought it was a very good meeting. And, yeah. and then we have other meetings. We have meetings uh, for visioning yep. coming up soon, uh, or revisioning or reimagining it, as she calls it, uh, yeah. of what the forum can do, will do in the years to follow. Yeah. Um, and then following that, a meeting on, a strategical meeting on exactly what events, what steps right. will the forum take, yeah. uh, what programs will the forum um, you know, create in the in the next year or so. Yeah. And, one, and I assume that that'll cover the legislative briefing in the, in the, in the middle of uh, January, just before the ledge opens. Yeah. And it'll cover Clean Energy Day in the summertime, because yeah. the forum has been doing that for at least ten years. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right on cue. Right on cue. Yeah. Okay, so we're about out of time. Um, I guess what I would ask you is to tell. Tell the people how they can stay in touch with the farm, what the farm can do for them, and what they can do for the farm, Maria. Oh, excellent. So the forum has a lot of information on its website, and the website is going to get revamped. So you can find a bunch of stuff there. It's not as easy as it will be once we get done, you know, trying to organize it and reprioritize the, the working groups and whatnot. But there is a lot of good background information there. Probably the most um, exciting part of it is the metrics piece because that is um, looking at trends. How are we doing, you know, what are, you, what are you measuring to get to success? And so that's also a very important piece. As far as what mechanisms there are to communicate to the forum, I'm, I really don't, I really don't know um, what there might be on the website. But we should have something. Yeah, we, we should. should have a way to engage. You yeah. know, we want to know yeah. how people feel. Yeah. We want them to know what we're doing yeah. and how we think they should um, you know, up their game in terms of energy appreciation. Right. Usually um, there's, you know, and so the annual um, transformational energy awards mm -hmm. piece. In June, at, at yeah. Clean Energy Day every Usually, year. Usually, so when that comes around, we send out email. Okay, so we send out email blasts to a whole bunch of folks. And... Um, they can nominate people or actually programs that have 
been transformative in the energy space, whether it's a policy idea or something that's been installed, you know, that demonstrates something new and different and, and um, better, a better way of doing things or a better way of communicating. So that transformational energy um, awards is one of the ways we get folks to nominate Right, and give Things recognition that, exactly. to the, the people who are central in the initiative. Yeah, yeah. so that, that's, that's a very tangible way to appreciate some of the benefits mm -hmm. um, that people in society are pro providing to each other and then publicizing those so that they can be copied. It's great fun to follow the forum. For one thing, you learn who's doing what in energy. And, that, and there, there are a lot of heroes out there in energy who are doing remarkable things. Yeah. It's not just the utility companies, it's all those guys. It's the regulators in the PUC, it's the guys who were starting you know, new, new companies, startup companies in, in energy with smart ideas. Yeah. Um, there's so many people doing so many things. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Yeah. Here we are, plunging ahead to 2045. Yeah. That's, that's an adventure. So to learn about the adventure is really learning a great story. Yeah. The other thing is it affects us, all of us. It affects us in terms of the quality of our lives in these mm -hmm. islands. It also affects us in the quality of our economy. It, it shapes us going forward. We can do it right or maybe not so right. So it's everybody's interest to, to know what's going on and maybe to say something about how they yeah. feel over energy development. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. I, only mention, I want to mention uh, just one other thing. Um, and that is, uh, you know, we were going to have uh, another guest on the show today. We were trying hard uh, to reach him, and that's our regular energy expert who appears on uh, Energy 808, uh, the cutting edge, on Mondays, often with Mina Morita, former chair of the PUC. Um, and he is right now studying energy, as he always does wherever he travels, in Southeast Asia. That's Marco Mangelsdorf. And when he gets back, hopefully soon, We'll debrief him on what he found in terms of clean energy and energy development in Southeast Asia. You know, you don't realize, it's really worth taking a moment for this, you don't realize that Hawaii is not the only one interested. <laughs> <laughs> there are people around the world who watch us, who want to emulate us, and some, in some ways they may do it faster or, you know, maybe differently yeah. in some way where we can learn from them yeah. too. If we can avoid making, if we can take turns making the mistakes or, you know, learning the valuable lessons and also find the successes and emulate those, you know, yeah. that's, that, that's always good. It's a global community. Yeah. It's a global yeah. initiative. Yeah. Well. But it really does take a lot of the face-to-face -face discussions because you don't write a report necessarily on failures unless you're, of course, Rocky Mountain Institute and you go <laughs> after a hurricane and see what failed. But, the, you know, that's very important, you know, to discuss what worked and why, what didn't work and why. And so if you have a place to come and discuss it, with folks, I think it's very helpful. So now that he's gone and discussed it with the folks in Asia um, that he was able we to meet know with, everything. yeah, let's get him on the show. We want to we want to be educated in every way about everything yeah. happening in yeah. the world yeah. about energy, so we can learn and do it best. Yeah. Thank you so much, Maria. Thanks, Jay. I'll see you next week. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> All right. Oh, good.